problem 10. We are given a rhombus FGHK with diagonals. If the slope of the line containing GK is 3 fifths, what is the slope of the line containing FH? Here is what you have to remember. A rhombus is a parallelogram with all sides equal. We also need to remember that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. Perpendicular. That means they intersect at a 90 degree angle. In Algebra 1, you learned that per the slope of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals. So if we multiply the two slopes together, we end up with negative 1. If the slope of GK is 3 fifths, Then we know that the slope of FH, if this is positive, negative 5 over 3. It's the opposite slope and the inverse fraction. When we multiply together, we get negative 1. 3 times negative 5, negative 15, 5 times 3, positive 15, negative 15 over positive 15 multiplies together to negative 1. Problem 11, another problem that is absolutely ideal for graph paper. That is the first hint all day, every day. The endpoints of CD. are negative 8, 6, and 2, 10. What are the coordinates of the midpoint? Get graph paper, use graph paper, get graph paper, use graph paper. What would happen if you got some graph paper and then, holy cow, actually use the graph paper? Yeah, okay, have I made my point? Okay, the endpoints of CD are negative 8, 6, negative 8, 6, that's point C, and D is 2, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. D. 2, 10. What we want to find here, my paper has dots on it. Here is C, here is D, C, D. We need to find the midpoint. There are two ways to do this. Strategy one is simply to let the graph paper work for us. If we're going to let the graph paper work for us, we calculate the distance between C and D, the x, the change in x. The change in x is 8 and 2 more is 10. Half of 10 is 5, so negative 8 plus 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be the x-coordinate. Now what's the change in y? The change in y is 4. 
halfway between C and D on the vertical axis is two more. So from six we go up two, or from ten we go down two. In either case, this is going to be the midpoint, and the coordinates of my midpoint are negative one, negative two, negative three, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Negative three, positive eight. Now, is there a way that I can calculate that? I absolutely can. The algebra freaks among us are going to be delighted to know that there's a formula to calculate midpoint, and the formula is this. The average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates. So let's do the problem that way. x1, negative 8, plus x2 divided by 2, y1, plus y2 divided by 2, the average of the x's and the average of the y's, negative 8 plus 2, is negative 6 divided by 2. 6 and 10 is 16 divided by 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Negative 3, 8. Oh, look, we are right and we can prove it. Congratulations. We are feeling very smart.